today we're going to talk about uh, presentation skills to get to be understood especially you have three levels of resistance in whatever you do so you have the resistance in i don't get it and that's the usual resistance if you're selling something if you're talking to some investor or whatever it is you have this level of i don't understand what you're talking about so here this whole session is about making yourself understandable the other two levels are yeah i understand what you're talking about but i don't like it that's a completely different uh, program and I don't like you that's kind of uh, trust uh, issues or bias etc so there are different techniques to address that but this one is I don't get it how to be easily understood especially by decision makers the whole webinar is um, structured in a way that first part of the webinar is how you structure the presentation and the other part of the webinar is how do you present that so how do you deliver the presentation? So the whole idea, as I mentioned, is to be practical, to give you some practical tools. Um, we are going to work. The bad news is that two hours that we are going to have or hour and a half now is not closely enough to cover all the topics for presentation skills. I'll try to give you as much as possible and not to suffocate you in the process. Idea is to have some fun. So I'm gonna give you some challenges, push you a little bit out of the comfort zone. So you do something. Uh, the brain works in a way that when you try it, it's much bigger chance that you will remember something. And also I will push you on the end to start using these tools as soon as possible, because it's a huge difference. If you see this, oh, there are some interesting stuff. Once I will come back and check them out. You will never do that probably and you will uh, it will be really hard for you then to start working on it so it's really crucial if you can use some of the techniques literally tonight tomorrow as soon as possible good so just to see is this working for you how many times in the last year you were presenting in front of the smaller audience so this is like when i say smaller audience means like important audience you need to present something and uh, maybe to sell them something or inform them about something important good so yeah eight plus one two three most of you from to seven or eight plus so you are presenting most of you a lot that's good that's good so this is uh, this is my way of checking is this useful for you or not so what do you expect from this session where should i focus on and good communication new tools okay i'm gonna share some structure of the presentation so let's start. So the first part is going to be around how to structure a presentation because it's really different if you are presenting in front of the 5, 10, 15, even 20 people and you want to have some interactions with them. You need to have some decisions from them. Usually when I'm doing it with leaders, it's the top management. When I'm doing it uh, in some private settings, it's more like, oh, how can I ask for some funds from the government or things like that. But it's a smaller group that are decision makers and how to present to them. It's different if you are on the stage and you're presenting in front of the 50 or 100 people. It's a different game. It's different rules, different way of structuring the presentation. I'm going to focus on the first one because I understood <clears throat> that you're going to need this in order to pitch your projects, in order to get some positive decisions in the future. So presentation structure depends on the audience and the goal we are aiming for. For smaller audience, we are using the pyramid structure. I'm going to talk about that in the first part. The second part is going to be all around presentation. So how to present, uh, to set the stage, how to set, set the stage and grab the attention of the audience, how to keep the attention with proper using of your voice, body language, words. You can use tools for the online presentation. I'm going to share a few ideas what you can use. But really, if you're going to present in front of the smaller audience to make some decisions, then usually you're just going to use some basic stuff like um, PowerPoint, Zoom, or sometimes it's useful to make some fancy uh, applications like uh, I was using Prezi. You heard about Prezi? Like Prezi is really cool if you're presenting in front of a lot of people because you're gonna keep the attention or for the PR, uh, press meetings, stuff like that. But when you're presenting in front of the smaller audience and you need sometimes to jump 
back and forth with the presentation it's not that useful i can show you some examples if we have time on the end but it is it looks cool and usually i'm quite often especially when i was working in marketing is can you go and present this to top management the topic of for example roaming but it needs to be you know cool and sexy literally that's the words and to make roaming sexy you really need some special application like prezi or something because it's quite boring for the audience good so this is generally what's happening when you're entering and start talking with your audience. You're going to have first three minutes of strong attention. After that, things are going down. So it really depends how you're going to use this first three minutes. If you don't use them correctly, you're going to miss the chance, literally. I'm coming to a meeting and I start presenting like this. Well, this is the funnel. Uh, well, last year we got the, um, the project we needed to deliver and it was a really important project and blah, 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 blah. Half an hour later, I'm getting to the essence. And this is what usually people do. And they usually do it in this funnel way of presenting because this is what they listen to during their college, high school grammar school we are always listening to the presentations that are funnel because they are presentation now i'm going to present a lot with the funnel because those are the lectures and lectures make sense to present them in funnel but when you're presenting a you have a presentation that just needs to get to the essence to get the decision are we going or not with this are you going to invest get the pitch get the attention of the audience for 30 seconds get it done or inform them about something then you're using the pyramid structure. Essence in the beginning, light from the start. So your headline needs to make sense. If I say, if I remember working in uh, telecommunication and you have like prepaid strategy, like this literally doesn't mean anything, right? So your headline needs to mean something, needs to present the main message of your presentation. So let me give you some examples with uh, journalism if you open the gossip news if you open no it's serbia it's like blitz fun pages uh, and it's all about you will not believe what this lady did uh, open this page to find out that's all funnel so you need to go to the end of presentation so you can find out what this lady did or uh, here the real reason van johnson left black uh, in crew chicago so you need to open up, then you need to check in probably a lot of ads during the your reading and eventually you will find out why he left or maybe you even not won't. But this is the funnel way of presenting. You keep the audience until on the end you get something. But when it comes to the sports news, usually they are in the pyramid way. This is Toby Alderweireld signs new Tottenham contract until 2023. So you understand everything from the headline. And this is the idea. Uh, one of my favorite writers, uh, Mark Twain, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to write you a short mail. So I wrote you a long one. It's so easy to make a presentation with 50 slides. Extremely easy because you just put everything there. And this is what you usually get when you're listening to the presentation. Uh, even top managers or people pitching for their projects or just wanting to get some money for some process that they're aiming for is just long bunch of slides and um, the way of delivery is something else we're going to talk more about it afterwards but you need to have a structure that is understandable extremely fast let me get it from you mark the pyramid which one of these sentences are in the pyramid headline and just mark them and for the rest they will not be biden tells americans i implore you wear a mask that's exactly, that's a pyramid. You understand everything from the headline. And then if you want to know why he said that, etc., you can open up the news and follow it. If you want to improve your health condition, try the SCD diet. Anybody heard from for SCD diet? It's a um, specific carbohydrate diet. I'm on it for the last two years. <sighs> extremely good. Not easy in the beginning, but extremely good uh, because you can literally change the way of uh, life. So next one. Matthew McConaughey reveals which one of his famous rom-coms he'd do a sequel to. So that's not the pyramid because you need to open up to find out which one it is, right? So here, like Ecology Summit for the Balkan region, this is like that 
prepaid strategy that I was mentioning doesn't mean a thing. So if you have that kind of headlines, I don't know, should it be there or not? You want to have a headline that's literally getting to the point immediately. So just want you to understand that one. That's the crucial thing. So when you're making a pyramid presentation, first thing what you need to do is make a headline, right? I'm saying here PowerPoint headline, but whatever you're using is the headline. And headline is the most difficult thing. So this is because we are limited with time. I'm going to focus on the headline. And this is extremely simple. Still, people don't do it because they're programmed to do differently. Uh, it takes a little bit of time for our brains to get it to start thinking a different way, start thinking in a pyramid way, just a little bit of practice. And you can practice it with your friends, family, and whoever just talking about like your like last year's summer. Can I say it in one sentence? What was great about it? Like in three key points, that's it, that's the pyramid. So summary, when you're opening up, usually people put the agenda in the beginning. An agenda, we are going to talk about my summer holiday, about where I have been, uh, uh, how much they travel, and I don't know, whatever it is. That's a funnel. That's the agenda that doesn't mean, again, I need to go through the entire presentation so I can understand what you're saying, what you want to say, or what you want from me. In pyramid style of presenting, summary equals agenda. I'm gonna give you some examples. And when you do that, then you're making a presentation. You start making slide headlines. This is like, every good consultant will tell you. Usually uh, what we do is you make the headlines of all the slides. You put them in Word, in Excel, or whatever you want. You read through them. If they make a story, good. If they don't make a story together, I need to change something. So I don't start making a PowerPoint slide before I have all this. And when you're good in some topic, I will literally make all this in, I don't know, for the good headline, it will take me a few minutes. For the structure and summary, again, a few minutes. And then for slide headlines, maybe 10 minutes or something. But I can do all that in 20 minutes. And then I'm, I can check if I have a boss. I can check with my manager boss, does this make sense for you? And then I'm going to make a presentation and he doesn't care that much about it. But if I make a presentation and show that to them, then I'm going to have, oh, change this color, do this. No, 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 change that slide. No, change this. And it's just interactions uh, goes into eternity. So you first want to make the structure, then make a presentation. Okay, if you need to check with someone, check the structure. Don't check the full presentation because you're never going to agree unless you have some template that is uh, the same for the entire organization. Okay? Please stop me if you have any questions, anything is not for you, um, clear or whatever. Okay, good. So the headline, this is the key thing for the structure. The headline consists of two things and you're gonna get all this presentation. I'm gonna share everything so you don't have to jump and write everything. If that works for you, that's great. Benefits. The first part, exactly as uh, I think Romina, you saw it for uh, the SED. If you want to influence your health, that's the benefit part. Proposal is how to do it. This is when I have the decision. I want a decision from my audience and I want to be positive. So first, what I want to do is give them the benefit. Why would I listen to you? Right? What's in it for me? You see this WIIFM. It's what's in it for me. That's the crucial part. You want to tell them, usually in corporation, it's going to be, oh, we want to increase revenue, cash flow, you know, show me the money or save cost. And to do that, we are proposing this project. Uh, you want to think about what drives your audience. If uh, usually you have three kinds of benefits. So you have the functional benefit, which helps you do something, right? It can be about money as well. It can be about time, cost, whatever it is. This is like functional. Help me do something. You have emotional benefits. Help me feel, right? If you're going to present, usually you're going to use the functional one and this pyramid works most for the functional one. So that's why if you need to address the emotional or the third one, which is a social one, you need to have um, verbal, uh, to verbally use it and also how to put it, uh, you need to use storytelling a little bit more. Stories drives emotions the most. So benefits proposals. 
when you're asking for money from somebody, and I've understood you're usually going to ask for this kind of, you know, approvals, it's usually 80% of those decisions are rational. You want to include emotions where possible, but don't overdo it. Social parts, social benefits are help me appear to others. So let me give you some examples. We want to connect young people from the region and thus further connect our countries. That's the benefit by creating a mentoring program for them. That's a proposal, how to do it. Okay, it's simple, it's easy to understand from the beginning. And then you can go and spread it into details and how to do it and why is, when I'm making a presentation, I need to prove, prove this proposal that it's gonna work, that it's gonna bring this benefit. That's the whole idea of it. Or let me make another one. We are offering you a strong brand PR campaign for your company on the Balkan markets. That's the benefit. By supporting the filming of our regional history documentary. So I'm approaching some company, I'm presenting this, I need to prove that this is gonna work, right? I'm gonna show you an example how you can do it. Now I'm just playing with this. I'm just gonna give you some directions, ideas, how to think about this. So headline, now I want to make a summary. The idea is that I want to use these first three minutes completely to show them the whole idea, the whole picture. And then if they need, we can go into details. If they don't need it, we can just finish it and save their time. The best thing you can do for your smaller audience is to save their time. That's This is what they are going to appreciate. Usually, for example, managers are coming and presenting in front of the top management or you know, in the companies, if you think about companies, and they're gonna start talking about how many hours they spend in this project. Nobody cares, like literally nobody cares. They just wanna see what's in it for them and they wanna find out if you can save their time because they are on the schedule. They're gonna listen to a lot of presentations. Okay, so how to do it? The benefit of the idea, why is important? This is what you want to put and then how the benefit will be achieved with arguments, providing reasoning, the key message headline having in mind the needs of your audience create a summary create headlines of all slides and check if they create a coherent story then you make a presentation this is what i want you to have in mind okay so when it comes to the presentation delivery uh, what is the key thing to remember okay so i'm going to give you some tools to do that these are the things we want to discuss today i touch pot this is something, how to open a presentation. I is introduction. Touch. Okay, let's, uh, let me do it like this. Can you give me some object? Just an example of any object. Whoever is first. It, it's a cup. Okay, just a second. Hello to everyone. My name is Petr Kosovac. Ever since I was a boy, I was, you know, I was using all kind of cup because of my mother. She was making me tea every morning before going to school. I needed to drink it from this cup of tea. I hated all my cups. It was so boring, white, black, usually, you know, or from my grandma's. Um, so I really wanted to make some specific cups, some cool cups that can be really, um, you can express how do you feel. So I'm here in front of you today because I'm presenting you a special cup where you can write on it with your fingers and just by washing it, everything will evaporate. So every day you can make your own cup with your finger because whatever you touch, depending on the cup you're buying, it's gonna be red or uh, black below, depending what you bought. So why am I presenting this to you? Because you are investment committee and with this cup on the market, we can literally change the way we do business in this country. In this country. We want to enter into each corporation and sell them this. So my presentation is gonna be divided into three elements. The first element is the cost of this cup. The second is the timing. How much do we need to start and go to the market? And the third part is about the materials that we are using. So let's start with the first part. So this was quickly made I touch pot. And the way to do it much better is if you prepare better. Now I've done it without any preparation, but I did a few things and just want you to recognize what I did. Okay. 
So the first part is introduction. I presented myself. This is the topic I'm going to talk about because you already know me. I don't have to maybe say my name is Petar, etc. depending on the audience. But I want to say the topic, right? If possible, if it makes sense, I'm going to tell a little story. Okay? Why am I telling a story? When you're listening to people, they're going to, or politicians or good speakers, they're going to always tell us a little short story when they're selling something. It's going to be like, on my way here, I noticed this and this. Or ever since I was, which I used to start. Or last week, I saw this movie. And this movie was about, and they're going to tell you a short story just to get your attention. Because we are brainwashed to listen to the stories for thousands of years. Literally. So if you look at the really good commercials as well, I remember a few years ago, uh, Romina, um, correct me, when was that? It was the NFL Super Bowl. There was uh, this commercial. It was all commercial in that year was like uh, really famous stars or it was about some good looking people. But then there was this commercial about the horse and the dog and their relationship. And it was a Budweiser commercial. It was the best because there was a story and emotional involvement in it. People love stories. We listen to the stories for thousands of years. It's in our DNA. If we don't like the stories, if this is not important, we will probably read encyclopedias and we wouldn't read novels, right? We are eager to get to the story. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the stories afterwards. So the next thing I did is give the purpose. I want you, uh, I want to, and uh, for that means, etc. So what I want to do and what's in it for you. So if you remember, I can use that pyramid and I can use this structure to open up the conversation. I can start with the story if it makes sense or if I can deliver it or if it makes sense for this audience. A short story. So why would I listen to you? This is the benefit. You can earn money or there is some emotional, social or functional benefit you're going to get. And the outline, this position, pres uh, presentation consists of three parts. And then I'm went through these three parts, which they are, and then transition. If you are talking in front of the 50, 100 people, then you're just going to start with a presentation. If you're talking with five people, 10 people, decision makers using the pyramid, then you're going to ask them, should I start from the beginning or you want to jump into any slide? So words, first thing, the words you're using, the language you're using, it should be simple, understandable. You should use short sentences, illustrational. Usually when I say about words, this is like a science for itself. When I start talking at the beginning, um, we can literally have like a two-day session for the words. I mentioned, okay, there there is going to be a lot of information for you. I also talked about, there, I'm going to push you a little bit into the challenges. We're going to have some fun. It's going to be practical. So I was addressing different personality types also with my words. So I can get your attention if possible. But not to go that far. You just want to use words that are understandable to the audience. Right? So make it simple. Don't use complex words. Now we are all using English. It's not our native language. So... English, uh, I don't know what is your experience for me. I remember first time when I was presenting in English, I was like, oh, now I need to think in English. But uh, it is easier, at least uh, for me, to play with this language uh, than with my native. But I don't have that much words uh, like I have for my native language. So words, one of the things that you really need to focus on here is uh, actually, basically, uh, uh, what I want to, um, to, uh, to say and so and so on and um, stop doing that. So instead of that, make a break. But most of you didn't have, you didn't have a break. So if I'm talking to you, it should be like, hello to everyone. My name is Petr Kosovac topic for this training is the presentation skills. So I'm making short sentences and making pauses so you can digest what I'm about to say. And this is about the voice. So I, uh, I didn't ask you this, but I'm guessing you maybe know uh, the importance of words, body language, voice. Do you know the, the percentage? Uh, I think maybe the words are 7%. Uh, 
uh, like uh, words are aren't the most important, but uh, uh, the as you said, the short sentences will make a, a good point. And uh, body language, I think it's uh, fifty-five percent, maybe. Do you know when that turns out? Again, so it was Nixon and Kennedy, and they were for the first time in the history of United States. Everybody were looking at the TV to decide, you know, the duel. Before that, it was always uh, about the radio. So the first time it was mostly on TV. Most people were watching the TV. So when it comes to voice, this is what I want to use the emphasize. So use breaks, pauses. One of the most important thing in presentation skills is the pause. And I got your attention now because I made the pause. So you want to use the pauses to grab the attention of the audience. Even though I don't have a clue what I'm going to say next, you're still listening to me because I'm talking in this way. Okay, so you want to emphasize things. If you see here, use variations in rhythm and melody. So I don't want to talk like this. Hello, my name is Peter Kosovac, and today we're going to present presentation skills because this sounds like a vacuum cleaner and you're going to fall asleep quite soon. I'm not making any breaks, so you can't understand what I'm talking. You can't adjust that and you're just... And this is what usually people do. So main mistakes are no breaks, no variations in rhythm and melody. I don't emphasize anything or I emphasize in the wrong moment. I emphasize, hello everybody, my name is Petr Kozovac and today we're going to talk about presentation skills. I'm emphasizing on the end of the sentence, which sounds strange, which sounds like your teacher without confidence coming in the grammar school. So you want to slow down, calm your words down on the end and make a break. Short sentences, break. So. Literally, if I'm putting away the words, it should sound like this. Blah, 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 blah. Short sentence, break, short sentence, break. You need to adjust. So the voice, adjust volume. It's much easier with this one because you can adjust the volume also with your microphone. If you are in person, live, people, you can you can check everything except the voice properly. Because if you are filming, your, the best way to prepare yourself is to film yourself. You all have phones, just put it there, film yourself, try it out, see how it looks like. Is the body language okay? Is the voice okay? And so on. The variations. But what you can't hear properly is the volume. The best way is to, for someone to tell you. I was doing so, I was doing so many trainings one to one also with some directors and they thought they are like quite normal with their voice but they were or shouting or speaking so loud that I can't hear them anything and when I told them like you need to speak up I can't shout this is shouting for them so I, I had to tell them okay if you don't trust me ask your husband and she was shouting afterwards after work to their to her husband and uh, am I now loud to you and he said but you're never loud, I barely hear you. So for the first time she realized, oh, I'm really speaking low. So for some people, it's like you need to use your full voice to be around normal because you want to do in this area. If you're lower than that, they will not hear you. If you're higher than that, you're going to be irritating them. So you want to adjust your volume. Use breaks, use variations. And this is the crucial thing when it comes to online presentation. Voice becomes even more important than it was. You want to use your voice properly. Body language is the next one. Basic things, because now you can see me in this frame. It used to be that you could see me in the full, with my uh, legs, body, full, uh, full view. Then I would need to think about my legs, where they put my legs. Um, it's much better if they're in one line, so I can be open on all sides. I can cover entire room. I don't just see this window. I see everyone on the left, straight, right. So I need my body language. But still some rules apply for the online as well. You want to use your facial expression much more. Whenever you can use the camera, it's completely different feeling if they don't see you or if they see you. 
So you want to connect more with the audience if they see you. Also, where do you look? Uh, a lot of you, when you were doing the presentation, you were like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm studying this, and I'm uh, thinking about this, or your eyes were left and right, right? Usually you are not using breaks that much. So that's regarding the voice, but I can give you some uh, tips afterwards on that. Body language open, facial expression, whenever possible. If it makes sense, use your smile, open up. I remember one guy, uh, he wrote literally four books on body language and he did a TED talk. He came to the stage, and he just opened his arm like this, like he was standing so you can see uh, his full body. And he did like this. And he was standing like that for 30 seconds or a minute. So uh, everybody was like, <laughs> what? And he said, most probably already have some impression on me. Um, uh, probably that I'm crazy. But the whole idea, you have four, you're making four types of impression. You can make four types of impression. Three types are important for us here. So the first one, you can be friendly, which is where you want to be. And that's a smile. And that's whenever you can show the open palms. I'm not carrying any weapons. Right? Do not do this uh, when you're talking or this, if this is the part you're being seen. Like now I'm talking and presenting and I'm like this, because it sounds like when we were animals, we were walking uh, with all fours. When we stand up, this part is open. If you're doing any martial arts, you will know that this is a, a, a vital organs. They're all here. And if you don't feel confident or we feel like we're not with the friendly neighborhood, we're going to do this subconsciously, or at least the perception will be like that. So you want to open up, right? The Whenever possible. Goes also for the palm of your hands. And yep. I notice this unconsciously um, yeah. when I'm not feeling comfortable or when yep. I don't want to open up, I uh, un unconsciously yep. just fist my hands like yep. that. Yeah. Yeah, this is what people do. Um, or they don't know what to do with hands. Now, it's easier online because your hands are usually high or whatever. Uh, but if it's not online, yeah, people don't do this, please. This is the um, the stand that was quite popular in the 90s and with some politicians, very popular even now. It's extremely irritating now, uh, also a little bit defensive. It's also some, subconsciously saying, I have all the answers, but it's became extremely irritating, uh, so avoid doing it. If you need to show the hands, you can make it like this, in part, like in front of your belly. Lower your shoulders, put your chest up. So don't be like this, don't be like Nixon. So people will not trust you. You you sound like, you, you're gonna seem like Mr. Burns, sneaky. Okay, if you're doing it like this. So you want to open up. Use the facial expression, especially when it comes to online speaking. You want to use your voice to the maximum. Voice is gonna be extremely important but you want to follow it up with your eyes, with your facial expression. I want to look as much as possible to you. If I lose you in the online world, in in-class, if I lose you for a minute, it's not a problem. You're there, I'm gonna get you back, you know, give you something or some, et cetera. Online, if I lose you for 10 seconds, you're on Facebook. So I really need to be there all the time. That's why, like we were talking in the beginning, when I'm doing these trainings, two hours, it's literally like eight hours in class, live, literally. Like after this, I'm brain dead for another hour. I, I can't speak, I can't talk, I can't operate. I need to really fill in my batteries, I'm drained. So you need to prepare for that. It's not easy. Also what you need to have, you always want to have some water close to you because your voice is going to go down you want to work on your breathing every time you make a break you breathe in breaks are your best friends people usually avoid breaks pauses because they're afraid they're going to use the attention of the audience what is toss toss is the boss toss is your audience the other side Everything you do needs to be connected to your toss. So eye contact, whatever possible. Now I'm online, but I'm trying to look at you or have a perception on that. I speak benefits before facts. I show you respect. Whenever you have a question, yes, I'm listening. I'm showing you notes that I'm listening. I don't have to agree, but I'm listening and I'm answering questions. I'm there. I'm constantly focused on you. Even if it's a hundred people in the room and you're alive, then you have 
what I usually did is I choose three people. If possible, I have a friend in the audience who's going to nod. That's great. That's great. Smile and nod to me. That's the best thing you can do to your friend. If not, I just choose three people. I look at them and this is the way because I put them in the different corners. So I cover all three elements when I'm talking. And if you put these three people correctly, everybody are thinking like you're looking at them. So this is the feeling you want to have or to make, to create. So the whole idea, the, the best definition of presentation skills I got from one technical guy who was um, completely sure that 99% of presentation are the words. And the way he was presenting was with a bunch of information. And when I explained this to him, like the rule 7, 38, 55, he said, oh, okay, so basically what you're doing you have the person or, or, or something sending the message, but with using the proper sound, voice, and body language, you're removing the obstacles so they can hear you. Like, yes, literally, that's it. Just remove the obstacles. Don't overdo it. Remove the obstacles so they can hear you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.